Well, good morning to everyone and welcome to... Oh, good afternoon, John. Thank you so much. For whatever reason, I still think that it's morning time, but it's way past 12 o'clock. And it's time for the most popular talk show there is on the island. Of course, Viewpoint. And if you hear me talking like this, it must be because I do have an interesting person in front of me that I'd like to be talking to today and I'm almost sure that you too would be happy to hear what this person has to say. I am keeping it locked just for the moment, but you know, eventually you will got to know who's there. If you're with us by way of 102.7, we won't say good afternoon to you. And if you're with us by way of TV Crib, a special good afternoon to those of you in the television audience. And of course, we are here for the full hour, straight up until news time at one o'clock. The Honorable Mr. William Marlin is here. He is the former leader of the National Alliance. It sounds a little bit awkward, but that's the reality. And of course, he was the former Prime Minister of St. Martin. I'd like to say a happy good afternoon to you, sir. And happy new year while we're at it, because I don't think we saw each other. Yes, we did. We did. Uh, but, you know, formally on the radio, not. Uh, we spoke in the parking lot uh, oh, yes, just a did. few days ago. But Happy New Year's to you, Wendell, to you and the family, uh, to you and your listeners, viewers, supporters, and uh, St. Martin, you know, as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. The year has just started, so it's appropriate to wish everybody, um, firstly, um, good health. We know we are going to have people who will pass in the course of this year, um, but at any rate, our wishes for the people of St. Martin in general. Um, good health to everyone, um, success in whatever you do, and, and much happiness uh, to the people who, you know, are still struggling with the aftermath of Hurricane Lewis. Um, uh, still no roof as yet, um, some still no electricity as yet, um, some jobless, some becoming jobless soon. Um, to them I say, uh, you know, um, better days are ahead. Things will not be this way forever. Those of us who enjoyed um, Hurricane Luis knew, know how we, how we have built back and how we have rebuilt and um, built back even better than before, come back stronger than before. And I'm sure uh, this will be the case as well. You've had a very unusual series of events that lead up to now. Uh, when I just mentioned that you are no longer the leader of the National Alliance, and when I said leader, I'm talking about the leader of the party in the political arena. Uh, how do how, how do you how are you dealing with this? Um, you know, there, 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 there are things that people, you know, sometimes confuse. Uh, like I can remember, former Antillian Day was on October 21st, and my birthday was also on October 21st. I used to make a joke out of it. And uh, when when people would say, um, happy Antillian Day, I would say, oh, thanks for my birthday, you know. And sometimes I say, well, the whole nation is celebrating my birthday because the two things coincided. Um, here you have, at the Congress of 2014, um, Sylvia Jacobs was elected a deputy leader. And at the time, I announced that um, for 2018 election, because we were hoping there would be no election between 2014 and 18, um, I will be celebrating my 40th anniversary of active participation in the political arena, um, and that I would then make my exit, and that the transition to the new leadership would begin in 2016. Um, lo and behold, instead of uh, an election in 2016, 18, we had one in 2016. At the time, I asked Sylvia if she was ready to take the helm. She said no, and she was at the time also battling with some uh, health issues. Uh, I, I wouldn't go into the details of them. And um, she even at one point uh, contemplated is like, hey, I'm not too sure if you know, with the situation as is that I would run in 2016 even. Um, 2018 or uh, 2017, 
after the whole vote of no confidence in the government and the loss of majority, um, we have made it clear up front that if the new majority would pull the plug on the government, the government will retaliate and pull the plug on parliament. Um, we did so, and at the same time, I made it clear that I will uh, stick to the promise that I made. And um, because it's not a promise uh, just to Sylvania, it's a promise to the party, it's a promise to the people of St. Martin. Um, and, and, and that is it. We had our Congress on the 3rd of September, on the 3rd of uh, January. And at the Congress, she was unanimously, by acclamation, um, voted in as the new leader of the party. I think it's exceptionally good for St. Martin. It, I, I think it's exceptionally good for the party. Um, after um, basically 39 years of existence, uh, the party has had two leaders. First, Mr. Vance James Jr. for um, what it was, I think, 19 years, and then William Ireland for 20 years. I, I, I think having a new leader, Silveria is a, um, a young, uh, young politician. Uh, she is not young uh, like a millennial. She's not 25 or 30 years old, um, but she is a young politician. She's a dynamic person. Uh, she's a strong, a strong personality. And I think having a female uh, leader as well brings a new perspective and a new dynamic uh, to the whole thing. So those who would like to uh, couple it with like, Oh, they're running. No, absolutely not. They ain't run William Ireland. I am now more than ever, um, probably you can say, um, stronger than ever, um, committed to the party as a candidate. Because it takes it takes away that, that if you want to call it a burden, and not in a negative way, but as the leader you have to look out for the entire flock. Um, you have to make sure things are in place. You have to make sure this, that, that, and the other is done. And... Um, not that I, not not that I'm happy, in in the negative sense. Um, but I'm 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 happy that I can now um, look at it from a different perspective. Just before the show, I was saying, you know, now I don't need to um, look down um, at at the other 22 candidates to make sure that everything is right and is in place. I'm at the bottom of the slate. Now I can look up to the top. Um, I've decided to 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 go number 23 on the slate because I I want to show as well that um, the party is strong at the top and strong at the bottom. If you want to build a solid house, build it on a strong foundation. And the National Alliance, unlike any of the other parties, uh, is strong at the top, very strong at the top, and very, very strong at the bottom as well. Okay, so the whole idea of the change was pretty much expected based on what you're saying. Yes, yes, and yes. That Within the party, everybody know that the change of leadership was going to take place um, in 2018. And you sounded, again, I, I was just making notes while you speak, because you sounded like you were all prepared to serve at least the four year out complete had it not been for what happened? We, we, you see, in 2014, we expected it would have been four years to 2018. In 2016, we expected it to be four years to 2020. Um, so we have not, again, uh, made it to no four-year term. Um, and I, I for sure did not want to now go back and say, well, okay, um, I'll run again as leader and in the next four years. Um, no, uh, it, it was it was time to make that switch, and as I said, it's it's a switch that will do well for the party. What we have also that you know the other parties do not have, um, we have uh, some new and 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 young candidates, uh, extremely dynamic, hardworking, and um, bringing sort of a new electricity. Um, to the party, it reminds me actually of my myself when I, when when you know we started. The thing is, then it was a brand new party, um, but I was young, and a lot of us were young, and the energy that we put into it, people in their twenties, um, was enormous. And I see that same energy 
in some of the young candidates. Our youngest candidate is actually uh, Jelani Gums, uh, just turned 22 in, in November. And uh, we have another candidate that is 23. We have a candidate that is uh, once 22, once 25. We have a candidate that's 35. Uh, we have some young candidates. And when we line them up also with um, the youngest candidate then, um, Ardwell Arion, who is a sitting member of parliament. And um, in his first um, year in parliament, I think he... He, in the beginning, it was like he's learning the ropes, and um, particularly in the last couple of months, um, he has made his name and has dissolved uh, to to return as a member of parliament. And uh, um, we are very excited about the slate that we have and the lineup of candidates. And I'm happy to be part of the team, but as I say, more importantly for me, I'm happy to be the foundation upon which that team is resting. Well, would you describe for me what you consider would be your role, it's albeit that you're going to be the foundation of the party? Um, de de definitely, I'm looking forward to being re-elected uh, you know, to parliament. Um, to, but the role in the party still, um, I would, I would, I would consider myself still the the chief political advisor of the party. I have extensive knowledge and experience of um, the political um, history and past of St. Martin. Um, when this happened, when that happened, why didn't this happen? Why didn't that happen? Uh, how to go about this? How to go about that? Training the new candidates, preparing the new candidates, um, grooming the new candidates in general. Um, I'm not looking, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking as a new party to see how things will work out for me. Um, I've had a long and successful run, um, but I think also that at this juncture, um, St. Martin needs um, not only um, young, fresh blood, but we also need people who have been committed to St. Martin. And I don't want to blow my own horn, but I can, when I look back and I compare myself uh, with others who have been around for years as well, um, my 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 contribution has always been for St. Martin, for the people of St. Martin. Um, nobody can ever say and point fingers that, um, oh, William Marlin did things for his own interest or he, he had some business deal he was looking at um, <clears throat> when he did this or he did that. If I would look at the purchase of Emilia Wilson estate, for instance, uh, that was purely for the people of St. Martin, for the people of St. Martin. Um, to preserve our history, our culture, to to give them back something where they can go um, uninhibited, uh, to go to to go and enjoy the park, um, to 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 enjoy the the, the nature, the environment. Um, today, as soon as we left the office, uh, we see what has happened to it. It's peddled off uh, to to someone else for way below the price. Um, while the same attraction could have gone somewhere else on private land. Um, the things that I have been involved in while I was government, um, the opportunities uh, that I got to serve the people was always uh, in service of the people for the people. And I, I, I think I still have uh, some years that I can, that I can give um, not only to St. Martin, but to the National Alliance as well. Uh, Silveria and I um, go back many years. I always jokingly say we went to school together in Cold Bay, uh, but of course I was the teacher and principal, and herself and her two younger brothers um, were students um, in Cold Bay School at the time as well, and, and you know, that's back in the 1970s. Um, so I have known her um, like all her life. Uh, I've been like a father figure in her life as well. So I have seen her grown as as a young person, went away, came back. We were colleague uh, uh, teachers, you know, and, and so therefore I know, I know her passion uh, for education. I know her passion for sports. I know her passion for St. Martin, uh, for getting things done, for getting things done the right way. Um, and she too 
has no 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 agenda, no hidden agenda. Her agenda is one for St. Martin and its people, and I'm I'm proud to be associated uh, with with her as our new leader. And she will have my full support. I can't win an election by myself, and neither can she. But I'm sure uh, with a strong top and a strong bottom, and uh, a good lineup, you know, in between both of us, uh, it's 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 a it's a winning formula. And we are looking forward to to the support of the people of St. Martin. In 2010, uh, we fell short of, I think it was 180 votes, to get eight seats outright. And all we have seen uh, were constant breakups. Um, governments were not lasting. And two things are interesting, Wendell. Uh, the Democratic Party has always been part of the breakups. Um, to remain in government. And what we have seen also, um, if you look at the, the, the coming together of the, of, of the UP and the DP, um, they have uh, five of the persons involved in, in, in jumping to break up governments on their list. Um, you, 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 you start with their number five candidate, uh, Chanel Brownville, uh, was the latest jumper uh, that uh, broke up the government uh, that we had put together in 2016, jumped and broke it up in 2017. We have Leona Marlin, who broke up the government of 2014. We have Cornelius de Weaver, who broke up uh, the government who jumped as well uh, to solidify that breakup. We have Maurice Lake who broke up the government of uh, 2015. Um, so you have an accumulation of jumpers um, on one list. Uh, so it tells, it makes the voters frown as to what to expect if you have a, a, a cage full of of frogs that jump from one place to another. If they're not satisfied, jump out, jump out of the heat. Um, so that is not a recipe for stability. And then you have another part of the party, um, some five or six of them probably, who uh, it is known by now, it is no public secret, they will not be able to serve as ministers because they have failed the screening. Uh, some of them failed it more than more than once. Uh, so again, when you look at the National Alliance and you look at that, which of them offer um, a, a comfort level to the voters that would say um, they are going nowhere? William Ireland has never, ever left. In 39 years, I have stayed, whether we won, whether we lost, whether we were in opposition or not, William Ireland stayed put. And his service is to the people of St. Martin, uh, his only business is the business of the people of St. Martin. Doesn't use it uh, to collude with no personal business that he may have or no family business. His business is the business of the people working for the people of St. Martin. <coughs> Mr. Mali, I believe our, our, our listeners um, deserve to get an explanation from your end as to why is it that the Dutch was so adamant about getting you out of office? Um, you know, I, it's, 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 it's a pity um, that uh, the Dutch government got involved um, at that level in, in making sure that, you know, it's like, let, let's collaborate in, in getting him out. So it became a joint venture between uh, some local greedy politicians who would do anything uh, to get back in power, um, not to get to help the people, but to get in power for their personal uh, business agendas. Um, this thing goes back to the, 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 the uh, Integrity Chamber. You can recall in 2014, um, in 2014, when we had elections, in 2013, 2000, uh, uh, 14 when um, they, they, they pulled the plug on the then coalition 
uh, that we were in, the Dutch were very concerned and they started talking about um, corruption in St. Martin and, and, and integrity breaches in St. Martin. And when that government took office, they wanted integrity investigations and the whole nine yards. Um, in 2015, uh, the Dutch insisted on enforcing integrity investigations. So uh, the D governor had to um, have a, an integrity investigation carried out that resulted in the Bob Witt Samson report that recommended an integrity chamber. You had uh, PWC had a report done. You had um, Transparency International did a scan. Uh, I think it was three or four reports were carried out. In 2014, following the elections, uh, what did the Dutch government's reaction was? Um, William Ireland was tipped then to be the prime minister. I was a formateur. Uh, we concluded our governing program and the screening of our ministers, and the Dutch were extremely happy. Finally, St. Martin is getting a decent government. That was their reaction from The Hague. Um, before the government can even be sworn in, Leona Marlin and uh, Cornelius de Weaver, who at the time said the only Lee he knew growing up in St. Martin is Bruce Lee, and blah, 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 blah. It's, it's recent. People can research it. Uh, he pulled the plug as well on the government. The Dutch retaliated and didn't like what was happening. Uh, they wanted tighter um, screening procedures because they wanted to make sure bad elements don't get in government. Um, that's when, in 2015, uh, they forced the government's hand uh, with this integrity chamber, with this uh, protocol of 2015, I think it's the 24th of May, um, having the government agree to put an integrity chamber in place. I voted against. Not um, against the fact that St. Martin uh, could have or should have an integrity chamber, but the makeup of it and the way it was uh, done. The Constitutional Court rejected the integrity chamber. Fast forward now, I became Prime Minister in November 2015, and the first thing the Dutch wants to know is when you're coming with the integrity chamber. He said it's not a priority for the government because we have an election in six months. After that six months, uh, we returned to government in uh, 2000, December 2016. And the first order of the day in January 2017, uh, they appoint a quartermaster. So you say, hey, how you could appoint a quartermaster to do what? Um, this is not your field of responsibility. I, there was a back and forth in the media between Minister Plasteric and myself at the time. And in January of 2017, uh, before I met with Mr. Plasteric in Aruba, the Parliament of St. Martin convened, and unanimously, uh, one member was ill and was not at the meeting, but the 14 members, all parties across party lines, supported William Ireland as Prime Minister and passed a motion unanimously rejecting the protocol of 2015 that gave the basis for an, for an integrity chamber. So January 2017, all members of parliament, all parties backed the prime minister. So the prime minister, armed with that motion, went to the meeting in Aruba, and uh, Minister Plasteric and himself could not reach any agreement, and it was decided parties will continue the discussion. Instead of continuing the discussion, uh, we got a letter when Minister Plasteric returned to Holland that um, if we don't agree to the integrity chamber, we are going to get an instruction. Uh, and he's going to the Kingdom Council to, uh, to have them uh, put an integrity chamber in place. Um, to that, my reaction was, you have no right to do so. So when they went to the Kingdom Council of Ministers, I spoke in that meeting, and um, it, they, it was like, we don't care, uh, we are not listening, we have the right, we have uh, the power to do it, so we have the numbers to do it, so we will impose it. 
I appealed the decision of the Council of the, the Kingdom Council of Ministers. I filed an appeal with the uh, Council of State. And in this case, um, based on the protocol, an appeal before the Council of State, the decision of the Council of State would be binding. It's not an advice. The ruling of the Council of State came on July uh, 6th, um, 2017. And in the ruling, it was uh, St. Martin by October 31st, uh, because in the protocol you have agreed to implement an integrity chamber, so do so by October 31st. There is no need for political consultation. Uh, consultation will take place at high civil servants level. And uh, because in our discussions I made it clear, I, I cannot sign an agreement binding the Parliament of St. Martin. The Parliament of St. Martin is its own independent body elected by the people. And every member of parliament votes his conscience. You can't vote the conscience of the government, or you can't vote the conscience of the Dutch government, or you can't vote the conscience of the Dutch parliament. You answer as parliament to the voters of St. Martin. That's how our constitution is regulated. That's how our democracy functions. That's how it works. Um, so it was agreed upon that government, at least, would do all in its power to have it finalized by October 31st. We came back and I did. By August, okay, this was July, by August we finalized the draft ordinance and on September 1st we sent it to the governor to send on to our local council of advice for it to go to parliament. On December 3rd it left the governor, went to parliament and the hurricane came destroyed the parliament building, uh, the top floor, uh, destroyed the government building, destroyed the office of the Council of Advice, um, the only office in government circles, so to speak, that was fully intact was the office of the governor. We wrote the Dutch government and the Council of State telling them, obviously because of the hurricane, we won't be able to finalize it by October 31st. The Dutch, however, the Dutch government said, no, um, it has to be done by the 31st. And then, then, here's where the big twist came. The Dutch government saw an opportunity now to score a touchdown. St. Martin was destroyed by the hurricane. Uh, they gave us uh, relief, uh, emergency relief funding. Uh, they helped us with any and everything, so to speak, that was wanted. But the, emerge the, the, the recovery fund, the recovery money is now the conditions to it. And we are thinking, well, conditions that we're going to get loans or soft loans or uh, the funding uh, projects got to go on public bid, got to be transparent. But no, those were not the conditions. The conditions were um, you're going to hand in. Uh, your control at your borders, you go hand in immigration and customs uh, will become responsibilities of Holland and the integrity chamber uh, will be controlled by Holland, uh, reports to Holland and um, we will um, have the prerogative to appoint two people in it. That is what I said to uh, no, you can't be serious. That's that's an indecent proposal. It is not right. Because you know uh, you can't win. Otherwise, you're not going to use the hurricane to beat St. Martin into submission. And that is where the fallout came. And that is when the Dutch um, started their negative propaganda against William Ireland uh, to, if you want to call it, rile up the people of St. Martin against William Ireland to chase him out of office so that they can uh, get their tentacles in the operations of St. Martin. And now the integrity chamber, some people think, oh, it's just, uh, what they got to hide? If you ain't got nothing to hide, um, so we got to hide. And I'm saying, no, A, it is the responsibility of the St. Martin government, one, and two, what people don't realize, this integrity chamber uh, has the right to investigate any and all decisions taken by the government. 
government agencies, government companies like the airport, harbor, GB, TLM. Uh, so they, take, they want to take a decision to do X, and the integrity chamber can ask for all the documentation as if you have committed a crime. So you, you are like little children operating um, under the supervision of Holland. Uh, you can't uh, you can decide you're going to buy this with your money. The Dutch is going to investigate and guess what? And I'm, going, I'm trying to round it off, but it's it's a story that people need to understand how it's put together. The integrity chamber, the only one in the entire kingdom, in the entire Dutch kingdom, the Dutch kingdom is made up of four countries, the Netherlands, Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin. Nowhere in, in Holland they have one. Nowhere in Aruba there is one. Nowhere in Curaçao there is one. St. Martin would have to get one. But guess what? It is not just giving advice. The advice is binding. So when they give, when they give you an advice, our council of advice, our highest advisory body, advises government on all legislation. Mm -hmm. But their advice is an advice. Our um, council of uh, our audit chamber they give us advice on our budget they give us advice on any and everything they also do invest integrity investigations but their advice is an advice the ombudsman would give government advice the ser would give government advice all of them it's an advice because the government has to govern mm -hmm. and you have advice you read the advice you check the advice and it is an advice. But with the integrity chamber, it is an unbinding advice. A binding advice is kind of a contradictio in termini because it's it's either an advice or not. But when it becomes binding, it becomes more an instruction than uh, an, advice. an advice. And to that, William Marlin uh, said, guys, no, you can't be serious. And the Dutch, through the, the chicken sink, the wash tub, the everything at him, made it appear as if he, he was the worst thing that ever happened to St. Martin. While if we just rewind the clock to 2014, William Marlin was a fresh of breath air. It's not like I was unknown, because I was the commissioner who finalized the transition of St. Martin becoming country, 2009 to 2010. So they knew me, uh, they had extensive uh, 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 dealings with me, but always knew Will Marlin is a guy of principle who stands up for St. Martin, and that is what I did. Stand up once again, defending our constitution, defending our autonomy, defending our integrity as a people and as government. i got to get a break in here. Uh, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Mr. Marlin, and I'll open up the lines if it's even for a short minute, so you can toss a question to him as well. Take a break and come back. And welcome back to the program. Of course, we have very little time left, but I'll give anyone who feels that they have an important question for Mr. Mali an opportunity to toss a question to him. And at 542-2580-542-2764-543-2141. Mr. Mali, I do appreciate the fact that I gave you the opportunity and I see that you used it to your advantage, of course. And everyone tells their story in a way that, uh, you know, coincide with their conscience and their conviction. We have heard from the Dutch why they were so adamant about you, but at least when you painted that picture, it, it looks pretty much like uh, what it turned out to be, but you know, everyone had a different idea. It's because uh, you, you, you didn't want to take this money and all of this. No, no, we uh, never said we don't want to take the money. We, we, we've accepted <laughs> over 50 million euros uh -huh. in emergency aid. We have never, never said no to the recovery aid. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, the recovery aid uh, was approved while I was prime minister. Yeah. The recovery aid was approved while I was prime minister. The deadline okay. for St. Martin to agree to certain conditions was October 31st. All right, Mr. Martin, let me take a call for you. Good afternoon, caller. You're on. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. Martin called all the ship jumpers, but he didn't call Francis. Thank you. Um, no, France Richardson never uh, broke a, a government. Um, that is the difference. I'm not talking about people who, who move from one party to another. Um, while a government is formed, while you have a government, 
Franz Richardson did not leave his party when Franz Richardson left the, Demo the National Alliance. Uh, it was after 2010, and we were not in government when he left. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's take another call for you, Mr. Marlin. Let's go to the telephones and say good afternoon to our next caller. Your own caller, go right ahead, quickly. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Happy New Year, remember, and I'll be in New York with you. Ex-Prime Minister, always still my Prime Minister. Uh, Prime Minister, ex-Prime Minister, Prime Minister. Uh, who God, listen, who God bless, no man curse. So you have nothing to fear, you did what you had to do, and we know what it's all about. It's white now, and white will always overshadow the black. Because the black, you have to write on it, and the white is pure. So you feel no way. And this coming from the cap, man. And don't forget my cap. Enjoy the rest of your day, please. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the support. <laughs> These colors. Huh? These colors that comes into play here. No, no. He's talking about the, the, the black that they are wearing. Uh, the, who, who's the, wearing the black? The U United Democrats oh, okay. uh, wearing black, like they're going to a morning, and um, the National Alliance color party color is white. Uh, so that's what he's saying the white would overshadow the the black color in the campaign. That was that was more a compliment than it really was a question. But I you know, sometimes they have some really excellent questions out there from our listeners and that's why we open up the opportunity. But Mr. Marley, I really want to thank you for sharing uh what you have done with us because uh uh it's one thing to walk around with a certain concept in your head as to what is the problem and to hear it from from somebody who is in the middle of the whole arena where everything is happening, uh, what what would you advise the incoming leader of the National Alliance when it comes to dealing with the Dutch? Because, of course, we're going to have to deal with them. We're not independent, so... Um, listen, the, 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 the problem... The, the, the problem... Uh, is, is, is simple. Um, the Dutch... The Dutch has their agenda, St. Martin, uh, and, and, and the National Alliance has its agenda for the people. I have always cooperated um, with any party in the kingdom. And when I say any party, any government. Um, but there must be some sort of a respect. Okay, you respect me and I'll respect you. There is absolutely nothing wrong with people... Um, standing up for what they believe in. There's ev everything right with that. I, I, I think the Dutch has gotten what they want. They have their integrity chamber now. And, and interestingly, when they, what you see now, um, once the funds were approved, uh, the, the, the World Bank came into play. Okay, so it's like, go deal with the World Bank. Um, they go set their conditions as to and and if you're giving me i was one of the commissioners during the reconstruction after louis in 1995 to 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 1999 i was one of the commissioners uh, who had access to um, quite some funding um the i i got i think it was eight million for the emergency homes at the time uh, but none of it was given to no Development Bank. None of it was given to the World Bank. All of it was given, um, was channeled through the reconstruction coordinator that was stationed on St. Martin. I can't remember the gentleman's name. There was one and then he was changed. Uh, but what the conditions were, the, uh, the, uh, the, the project had to go on bid, which we had absolutely no problem with. It went on bid. It was transparent. It was clear. And they made the payments directly uh, to these people, and the houses were delivered. Okay, Mr. Man, let me just make... Take a Belvedere was also one of the projects. All right. Good afternoon, caller. you on. Quickly, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Good afternoon. I have one question for the Prime Minister. Yeah. With knowing all of these scenarios where the Dutch are trying, you being the Prime Minister, why didn't you fight to the very end and go down? Because you have honorable prime minister behind your name. So I think, Mike, why didn't you fight to the very end, despite of who all saying what and what saying whatever? Why didn't you fight to the very end? 
being a leader of the country doesn't only mean that you have to do what people say. Sometimes you have to stand up to the very end. So why didn't you stand up to the very end? And, and why did you decide to retire? And no, I did not. And I, I understand the question. The is the right thing. So for the right for me, it's to the very end. Thank you. Thank you, but you're confusing. You're, you're confusing one thing. Um, to be the Prime Minister of St. Martin, you need support from a majority in Parliament. What you have is that on the 2nd of November, the new majority made up of the UP, the DP, and MP Chanel Brownbill passed a motion of no confidence in the government. So the government was sent home by Parliament. Immediately that same afternoon, I submitted my resignation based on the Constitution. If you do not have um, a majority support in Parliament anymore, you have to make, you see make your, your position available, which is what I did. All of us did. In accordance with the regulations, the governor thanked us for making our position available and asked us to stay on. He will appoint a new formateur, and when that formateur uh, completes his job and a new government is sworn in, we would then leave office. Um, a week or two after, the, they went back to Parliament, a week after I think it is, passed another motion of no confidence in William Ireland. My reaction to that was, I already resigned, um, so what it is you want? I have already resigned, all of us. Every one of the ministers had tendered their resignation. When Holland started uh, getting in the mix and putting pressure on the governor, the only one who can dismiss me is the governor. The governor was like forced uh, between a rock and a hard place, and um, I have already resigned, so the governor would then have to fire me, and to make it easy on him, I exactly. submitted uh, a, a, a national decree, uh, decree um, for my resignation. It was signed, and I went home. It doesn't mean that I quit politics. It doesn't mean that I gave up. I am playing it by the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the rules. Um, what you have, totally, totally unique, never happened before, that the Dutch government has gotten involved in the mix and um, putting pressure on the governor because the governor is the one who can hire, not hire, who can appoint or dismiss ministers. When we are taking the oath, we go to the governor's cabinet. That's where every minister takes the oath. What has happened in the interim is now, um, MP Frankie Myers was appointed for mature didn't pass the screening himself, didn't finish the process, pulled himself out as candidate for prime minister and formateur, and then MP Westcott Williams was appointed formateur. And we keep hearing, whether it's true or not, that several of the ministers they keep putting forward cannot pass the screening, cannot pass the screening. It is m weeks now, um, over a month for sure, um, almost two months. Uh, yeah, not almost, two months now that a formateur has been appointed and still no government. Okay. I think he may have been referring to the fact that you went ahead and affixed your signature in agreement to the integrity chamber and the border control? No, no. Um, people, people this, you see this another thing, eh? Um, conditions, the Dutch are saying, if you want, uh, we won't give this money to St. Martin if you don't agree. The government on the 30th of October said, okay, we will agree to the conditions. Okay. Before the conditions can even be put in, in a law, in a draft law, the, the new majority of eight, spearheaded by uh, uh, MP Westcott Williams and, and Theo Heilig and them, they signed on to a motion accepting the conditions as is, as presented. Um, so no, if you see it was a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. If I had said no 
I don't want the aid. Then it would have been said, St. Martin, Marlon refused the aid because of his, his uh, thing. But the vote on the ordinance is a vote that members of parliament had to take, not the, not the prime minister. Okay, let's take one final call from Mr. Marlin, and then we'll have to wrap it up. Good afternoon, caller, you're on. Yeah, th that is the part I was talking about. With, is the part when he was prime minister, and the Dutch was giving him that kind of pressure. And he knew it was wrong. In the long run, he still ended up signing. You understand? So now that is the part he's saying why well, he didn't resist to the very end. Oh. You understand? Because don't think he have people out there saying what you're saying and saying that they didn't want and that wasn't right. So that part there, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't have put your signature. No, we are wrong. No, I, in my opinion, no, we are wrong now. Once you believe in you understand? You shouldn't have put your signature. Kind of long when you put your signature to it, and they still get rid of you. So you should have resist that part there to the very end. You understand? So right. you might have more strength and more power in the people's eyes. You got to... Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks again. And I look forward to your support in this election. All right. Mr. Marlin, again, I want to thank you. Minister, because you did share some solid information that I'm sure that a lot of people didn't have access to. Thank you, Wendell. Yes. And, uh, you know, as always, I look forward to, um, through this program and other programs, communicate with the people of St. Martin and provide um, vital information uh, where necessary. Okay. I hope people, you know, are, are truly focused on the real developments and do not succumb to um, misleading advertisements, misleading information, misleading jingles, and, and false promises. But really look at who stands up for the people of St. Martin uh, when they need representation, who fight for the people of St. Martin when they really need representation, or who only want to get in government, want to get in government for their own personal and business interests. All right. And that's going to be the final word for today. Please, I want to thank you for joining me here with Mr. Bali. And of course, I'm inviting you to come back again tomorrow at noon for a similar program. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.